Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Hannah and on my channel, I post anti-MLM videos and I also have a clothing reselling business on the Poshmark platform. And so I post a lot of reselling tips and tricks videos as well. I feel like it has been forever since I've sat down and made a video. I've still been uploading every weekend, but I pre-recorded last weekend's videos because last weekend was my wedding. So obviously very preoccupied with that. So I had pre-recorded and pre-uploaded those videos. It's been like like two weeks since I've actually sat down to film something. A couple little random updates. The wedding was perfect. It was amazing. We postponed it an entire year and so it was so nice to finally do it. It was everything I ever wanted. It was absolutely perfect. On the other side of that coin, I woke up the day after my wedding feeling so bad. I'm going on day six of this cold that I just like can't seem to get rid of. It's all like sinuses too. I'm going through a lot of tissues right now, but I am fully vaccinated. I went to the doctor. I got tested. I don't have COVID. So don't even come at me with that. This honestly always happens to me after like a really big event happens. Honestly, without fail, it always happens to me. When there's something going on in my life and there's like this massive anticipation and build up to it and planning and concentration concentration and effort and energy, as soon as that thing is done, my body just crashes. My mom is the exact same way, both of us. Anytime like something really, really big happens in our life, it's like we expend all of the energy that we have to get it done. And then the moment it's complete, it's just like shuts down. But fortunately, I think I'm on my way out of it. I think I've rested enough. Um, I've spent the past four days pretty much in bed when I wasn't at the doctor. It's like exhaustion and a stuffy nose and it could be worse. I haven't had a fever, so thank goodness. But I'm back, I'm here, I'm really, excited for this video so I apologize if I sound a little bit congested. I considered just not uploading anything this week and putting this off until next week but honestly I'm just too excited like we have too many good things to be reacting to today. I apologize for the longest intro ever but I wanted to address one more thing before we get started. I have been getting so many comments of people saying that things like beach body ads will run on my videos or just MLM ads in general. People are like did you know that MLM ads are running in the middle of your videos and they're interrupting the video? I swear I've responded the same thing to like 10 comments, so I just wanted to address it within the video itself. As the person creating the content and uploading the videos, I do have the power to decide when the ads play throughout the video. I don't have any power over what ads will run. So even though this is an anti-MLM video, occasionally you will see MLM ads running on this video because that's YouTube's kind of like poor attempt at their algorithm and pushing out advertisements that they think that the viewers will relate to based on the content of the video that they have chosen to watch. But the way that I look at it is companies like Beachbody, other MLM companies who are paying all of this ad money to have their ads run on YouTube videos, that money is just being wasted, right? Because we are not the target audience, obviously. I think it's hilarious. I love that MLM ads run on my videos because I like to think that the company is just wasting all of these ad dollars, pushing out their advertisements to people that have literally the least chance of buying their product or joining their company. Anyway, I just kind of get a kick out of that. So yes, there are MLM ads that run on my videos. I know that, I have seen them. It happens when I watch other anti-MLM creators videos as well. Just know it's like an algorithm thing. I have no control over it and we kind of do like it when they play, okay? Keep that in mind. Without further ado, let's get into what I have planned for us today. There are some good ones. Grab your coffee, your tea, your wine, your snacks, whatever it is and sit back, relax and enjoy. I have both my coffee and my water today. Does it get more basic than this? The answer is no. All right, let's get into it. The first thing that I have for us today to react to is actually something that a subscriber sent to me. So I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you that you can send me things that you want me to react to also. Up until this point, it is me that is finding all this content. It's me that is screen recording it, but slowly but surely I'm being blocked. So I feel like the more that I make these videos, the less and less access I will have to these people's accounts. And eventually I may need to rely on other people to send me stuff. So from this point forward in the description box of all my videos, 
videos, there will be instructions for how you can send me reels, TikToks, Instagram lives, whatever you find that you would like for me to react to. So a subscriber sent me an email. It's a screenshot of a message that she got from a savvy rep as like a recruitment pitch, like, hey, come and join my team. So her email says, this is a real text I got from someone I know. I've recently lost a good amount of weight and this is how she decided to pitch me. So the savvy rep said, okay, so now that you're all fit and hot, let's get you into savvy. Seriously, the clothes are amazing. I can wear a small, medium or large, which means that you can easily do a large or extra large. The sizes are so fluid. The brand is going to blow up and you can start for as little as $99 for the year. It's actually just a super smart business move, but I am swayed you would enjoy, I think she meant to say sure, but I am sure you would enjoy the clothes and community too. And then she says, now that I'm all fit and hot, sorry I was Shrek before. Okay, a couple things. First of all, what an off-putting message to send somebody. It is never appropriate to comment on somebody's weight, like ever, ever, ever especially as like a recruitment tactic and trying to get that person to like you and join their team. The message just starts out so unprofessional and so tone deaf and it just gets worse. Last I checked, Savvy, they're an activewear company, by the way. I feel like I should have said that before. They're in what I think they're calling like their pre-launch phase. So essentially, they're like a brand new company. They're working to like kind of build up the business, get a whole bunch of salespeople to join. And that is the main selling point for the reps at this moment, right? Get in now while we're still small and we're not too saturated and you actually have a chance to make it to the top of the pyramid. And the fact that the rep is saying it's actually a super smart business move, but I'm sure you would enjoy the clothes and community too. That is a huge red flag. Clearly, like the products are the secondary focus of this pitch. If the focus of your MLM company is more on recruitment than it is on selling product, congratulations, it's a pyramid scheme. The next thing we're gonna be looking at is from a guy that's in Monet. This is super uncommon to see, I feel like. His hair is incredible. His Instagram aesthetic, immaculate. His brows are better than mine, but he still posts pretty problematic content. So let's take a look. This is the Cardi B audio where it goes, that's weird. And it's just a whole bunch of victim blaming. It says them, Monet didn't work for my hair. And then it says, didn't stay consistent, combined with other brands, didn't wash properly, didn't educate themselves about the science behind the ingredients, didn't understand the hair cycle, didn't purchase the products from an educated market partner, didn't communicate with their market partner. And then at the end he goes, that's weird. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's just start with the first thing he said. So he said, didn't stay consistent. I see this all the time from MLM reps, especially in Monate, where they say that if the product didn't work for you, it's because you didn't try it for long enough. If your hair is falling out and if you're having a bad reaction to this product, stop using the product. In Monate's settlement with the Florida Attorney General's office, it literally states that Monate reps cannot encourage customers to keep using the product when they say that their hair is falling out. Monate reps used to say that this was just your quote, scalp detoxifying and they would encourage you to keep using the products because don't worry, it's just detoxifying and one day you won't be losing so much hair. Maybe because you won't have any left. Trust your gut. If something is not working for you and it's causing you bad symptoms, stop using it. Of course, this applies to any and all products, but especially multi-level marketing products where the reps are going to say and do whatever they have to do to get you to keep purchasing from them. Next he says, combined with other brands. Maybe this is just me and my own personal experience and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but when I go to the salon, the hairdresser might use Redken shampoo, Redken conditioner, Moroccan oil, Kenra blowout cream, Biolage finishing spray. Okay, we pick and choose the best quality products from a variety of different brands. We do this with our cosmetics and our skincare too. Okay, I have like seven different brands on my face right now. But only in multi-level marketing companies do I see people saying that their brand's product is the absolute best you will ever be able to find. And it is just simply impossible for you to combine with different products products or else they won't work. That is a massive red flag and you should run far, far away. And then the next three say, didn't wash properly, didn't educate themselves about the science behind the ingredients, didn't understand the hair cycle. Sir, 
It's shampoo. This is not brain surgery. You do not need to conduct research on the science behind the ingredients and the hair cycle in order for a shampoo to work for you. That is just absolutely absurd. The instructions for how to use a shampoo, they're written on the back of the bottle. Okay, a first grader can figure it out. You squeeze them in your hand, you rub them together, you massage it into your scalp and you rinse it out. It's not that hard. If a shampoo doesn't work for you, find a new shampoo. Okay, if you are using Monate and you're like, yeah, I don't really like this very much, going on Google and researching the hair cycle is not all of a sudden gonna make this bottle of shampoo work any better for you. Maybe researching different ingredients and figuring out what the culprit of your irritation is and avoiding those ingredients in the future, that could be helpful, but it is infuriating that he is implying that if you don't like Monate products, it's because you're uneducated. Get out of here with that. And then the last thing he says is didn't communicate with their market partner. This is really problematic because he's saying that if you don't like the products, you need to go talk to the person that sold it to you. There is literally one outcome that you will receive out of going to talk to the market partner. And it's that they're just gonna pitch you a different product. They will never be like, oh yeah, you know, it doesn't work for some people. Sorry about that. You might wanna try another brand. No. Absolutely not. They have a financial incentive to get you to keep buying their products. So nothing they say will be without bias. And I'll also take this opportunity to say that market partners receive no formal training and anybody with $199 can sign up to sell it. So I wouldn't be consulting them on product information anyway, okay? They're probably not the best source of information. The next video we're gonna be watching is from somebody at the very, very top of Monate. And literally just in this moment, I'm realizing that pretty much all of the things we're going to be reacting to today are from Monate. I promise I'll do a better job in the future of like giving a good mix of companies. But honestly, I feel like they're featured so much because there's so much insanity that goes on. So many false claims, so much manipulation. I would argue that it's one of the most popular MLMs in this day and age. And there's just so much content out there, okay? I can't help it. So today, I guess, is primarily a Monate video. Sorry about that. I will do better in the future. Anyway, she is at the top of the company and this is an Instagram live that she posted and the title is understanding those haters in your DMs. I cannot wait to see. <laughs> Get ready for a wild ride. Happy Tuesday. I want to talk about something really fast. This is only going to take a couple minutes and it's in regard to hate messages, quote, troll accounts, people who, you know, create fake accounts to to come after somebody else because there's some an interesting phenomenon that happens when I share sometimes those posts or those comments that I get in my DMs. So first of all, if I share like a hate message on Instagram, um, some people laugh along with me. Other people say, I can't believe there are people out there that would say that. I don't understand. And you know, to that I say, I absolutely understand. I can believe that people do that and it's not a surprise and the number one reason it does not surprise me that people create fake accounts on social media that they tell you things that are hurtful or um, assumptions that that are that are you know way off base why they create hate accounts on social media or have reddit threads attacking other people the reason people do this is because as humans, we have an innate desire to be seen and heard. That's why they do it. And that's why when someone sends me a hateful message or creates a YouTube video about me or screen records my stories or my videos and they post them and they tear me apart and they say things that are, you know, dumb, right? Or, or um, inaccurate or hateful. And they're, they're doing this not because they're a fan or even because they're a hater or because they're a troll or simply because they disagree with me, which whatever, right? We're all different and we all have, you know, different belief systems and ethics and morals and, and all these things. The reason people do it is because we have an innate sense to be heard and seen. They want to be heard and seen. And that's it. I find this video actually very perplexing because I see it from both sides. 
As someone who makes videos and puts them on the internet, I have also been subject to nasty comments or hate comments. I don't think it's right, I don't think it's appropriate, but to a certain extent it's kind of inevitable. But I think there is a very important distinction to make between hate comments and comments that are displaying like a difference in opinion. I do agree with her in the sense that I also believe that people who make fake accounts for the sole purpose of going into somebody's DMs and to send them hateful messages, like you're ugly, you're stupid, whatever it is, I do believe that that is hateful. And that could be an indication that there's something deeper going on with that person where they are feeling the need to act out and to release their anger on somebody. And as she said, they're just feeling this need to be seen and heard. However, throughout this video, she references being included in anti-MLM YouTube videos and having her posts like screen recorded and responded to. And I don't believe that that's the same thing as hate comments. As somebody who makes anti-MLM videos, I don't believe that this content is hateful. I protect people's privacy. I don't make personal comments or attacks. And the sole purpose of this type of anti-MLM content is to react to, comment on, and discuss a difference in opinion on the things that people in multi-level marketing are saying. It's simply, here's what this person is saying and here's how I see it a little bit differently. I'm just speaking from a personal perspective, right? Because as someone who does make these videos, I don't think that it's hateful. And I share this because it's very, very common for people in MLM businesses to see any kind of difference in opinion, anything that goes against their beliefs to be hate or hateful and coming from haters. And this is simply because the facts and the evidence provided in the anti-MLM movement are really difficult to dispute. It is a lot easier to just call somebody a hater, to block them, to ignore them, than it is to open yourself up to a conversation where you're forced to face information that might go against what you believe to be true. For example, the most common negative comment that I get on my videos, and I also see this all over the place on like anti-MLM posts from anti-MLM accounts on Instagram too, the most popular comment is something along the lines of like, wow, imagine having a whole video dedicated to hating on women. Just imagine spending your time and energy this way. But seriously, you guys, to this day, I have yet to receive a comment that disputes any of the factual information that I'm presenting. I saw in one of Chelsea Suarez's videos, you should check her out if you haven't, I'm sure you have, that her favorite response to these kinds of comments is she'll just say, where are the lies? I have since stolen that response and I love saying that because whenever I get a negative comment, I'm like, you can be angry, that's fine, but where are the lies? What did I say that was not factual? What did I say that was not true? And I have yet to ever receive a response back to that question. Either they delete the original comment that they left or they never respond to my question or they come back and just say, well, you're just such a hater. Like the question never gets addressed. And I think that that speaks volumes and I wanna keep that in mind as we continue to watch the rest of this video. So when you understand that, when you, you, you know, you can be more empathetic. You can let it roll off your back. You can be unbothered. You can laugh at it. You can ignore it. You can block it and move on. And it's not a big deal. And it doesn't affect me in any way, shape or form because I know who I am. I know where my morals, my ethics, my beliefs are ingrained. I know the good that I'm putting out into the world. I know the value I have to offer is simply a human being. And when someone is hateful or rude or off color or just a plain old asshole, and we can call them an asshole, you know, I'm an asshole sometimes. And they, they focus so much time of their life and their day on being offended and making sure they verbalize it. It's just because they want to be seen and heard. They have such a, a, a focus of being seen and heard by anybody, even if they know it's not kind, even if they know it's not true. There are so many videos and posts about me out there that are just not true. Well, I don't, okay. My job is not for everyone to like me. My job is not for everyone to accept me as who I am. My job is not for everyone to think that I'm valuable to the world. My job is to take care of my family, offer value on the things that I feel passionate about and make an impact in my community and as far and wide as I feel I'm capable or able to do. And 
we all want to be seen and heard. And some people just choose a way to do that that is not something I would ever do. What did I say? They always come at it with the imagine wasting your time and energy. But in that clip, she said that her job is not to be likable, right? But I would argue that it kind of is. If you are in the business of social selling, you do need to be likable and relatable and trustworthy. That is your entire job. Your whole business revolves around people buying things from you and joining your team. So yes, you do need to be likable. That's a very important trait to have if you are going to be in multi-level marketing. But it's how they choose to live their life and it has absolutely nothing to do with me and absolutely nothing to do with you. So the next time, you know, I get a lot of messages saying, how do you handle that? How, how does it not upset you? How does, how, you know, how do you deal with people being hateful to you about what you look like, about the kind of mom you are, about your kids, about your work, about your life, about your money, whatever it is. I handle it because it abs it's irrelevant to me because it's just their way of trying to be seen and heard. And we all want to be seen and heard. There's just, in my opinion, good ways and bad ways, right and wrong ways to do it. And how someone else chooses to be seen and heard has nothing to do with me. And what they say has nothing to do with me. And I don't have to invalidate or validate anyone in any way. You know what I mean? So the next time someone says something mean to you in comments, they send you a DM from a fake account or even a real account. You find out that there's a YouTube video about you, a Reddit thread about you, a GoMe thread about you, and it's all lies or it's just nonsense or it's chaos. You know, all you gotta, you know, just tell yourself that person's just trying really hard to be seen and heard. And you know what is, it's clickbait. And we all know that clickbait works, right? But it has nothing to do with you and it has nothing to do with me. People are that way. Oh, Dixie. Ollie's barking to come in. People are just that way because they want someone to hear them and see them. And the louder and more aggressive they can be and more chaotic they can be, they feel like the more attention they'll get. Um, and that's it. I don't think that anti-MLM content is intending to be loud or chaotic or aggressive at all, really. And I don't know if I really agree that it's clickbait either. I guess I can kind of see like, the thumbnails are obviously very extravagant and like the titles and like obviously you want people to look at your video and click on it. You best believe that when one of my favorite creators posts a video, I click on it immediately. However, it only becomes clickbait when you bait somebody into clicking on your video using a misleading thumbnail, a misleading title, and you're sort of promising something that never really gets addressed within the video. It's like deceptive or sensationalized. And the thing that you're sort of promising that viewer never gets addressed or never gets talked about within the content of the video. I don't feel like that's very common to see within anti-MLM videos because quite honestly, it really is as bad as you think it's going to be based on the thumbnail. As a personal example, I think it was MLM Top Fails 3, I think it was. My thumbnail was me like going like this and it was like yelling at customers. And literally I showed you a video of a paparazzi hunt screaming at her customers. <laughs> like you got what you were promised, right? So anyway, tangent about clickbait. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I fully agree with the clickbait thing. I don't agree with her saying that this content is intending to be chaotic and aggressive. No, the root of why this content even exists is because there is an unethical business model out there in the world right now where 99.6% of people lose money and people are still joining and they're still getting sucked in and they're still getting scammed. This is something that needs to be talked about and as long as it's still happening, there's still a need for this content. The mission statement here is to provide the information to help people educate themselves on this unethical business model and not get scammed. That's it. And for people in MLMs, this is incredibly threatening. They hate that this information is out there. They don't want it to be accessible this easily to the people in the business. It's called information control and that is a cult tactic used in a desperate attempt to keep people trapped within the multi-level marketing business model. I'm not offended. You guys do not need to apologize to me. I won't apologize to you. I'll probably laugh with you about it, you know, because it is kind of funny the way some people choose to live their lives, but it has nothing to do with you. So 
it's much easier to be empathetic, not get upset, not get angry, not, you know, have it ruin your whole day. If you realize this is just the way this person has chosen to hopefully be seen and heard and whatever traumas happened in their life or whatever person made them feel invalid or people that made them feel invalid, maybe growing up or whatever. Um, that's not your burden, your cross to bear your burden at all. So I hope that encourages you a little bit. Um, because I know that there are some of you who, who deal with it too, and it's harder for you than it is for me because you haven't maybe accepted that yet. Um, and I get it. Like it's, it's, sometimes it's hurtful for people to say stuff about you that's not true or post stuff about you or make fun of, you know, how you look or what you weigh or the clothes you wear, or how you parent or the job you have or whatever, but it really truly has nothing to do with you. You're just who they've chosen to scream at for the day and tomorrow it'll be someone else or whatever. That's why I say you got to just block it and move on. It's irrelevant to you. It has no room in, in your life, in your space or whatever. It's you're just done. It doesn't matter. Um, but it's, it's, it's a, so much more unfortunate for them than it is for you because this is their desperate attempt to be seen and heard. And sometimes that's all they need. And there have been people who have come to me with their own like actual account and name and face and had conversations with me. They were just desperate. People that like hated me, they were just desperate to be heard and understood. And the second we were able to like sit down and have a conversation, everything like just kind of went away, you know, and until they get to that point, then there's no conversation to be had. And it's, you know, it's a non-issue. So I hope that that encourages you a little bit today. We all get a little bit of it from people, even people we know, you know, just like that. They just want to be understood too. You know, we're all just, I love that. I love that quote. We're all just like walking each other home. Have you ever heard that? Just is what it is. They just want to be heard and seen and validated in some way, shape or form. So empathy is key. Understanding it has nothing to do with you. And then, you know, block, bless and release. So. That is how I handle it. I get that in my DMs a lot of times. So I thought, well, I just go live and we can talk about it for a minute. So I hope you guys are having a really good Tuesday and I will talk with y'all soon, okay? Bye. Did you enjoy that nine minute video dedicated to how unbothered she is by negative comments? I want to end that clip by saying that I don't necessarily disagree with everything she's saying. If somebody is being horrible to you and they're sending you terrible messages or terrible comments, you have every right to block them, delete the comments, whatever you need to do. But the point of me showing you that super long video is to highlight how hate comments or differences in opinion, or in the case of anti-MLM content, the differences in facts most of the time, they're two completely different things. And people in MLMs are encouraged to create this bubble around themselves where they write off any negativity, any negative comment as hateful and I'm blocking you and I don't wanna hear it. And it's simply so that they do not have to be exposed to things that are threatening to their business and see and hear things that might go against their beliefs about their business. Again, a very, very common cult tactic for information control. Okay, this next one, also a Mon 8 hun, sorry. This is a reel and it's the audio where it goes, have you ever been in love? Do you want me to describe it to you? And it says, have you ever created the life of your dreams from selling shampoo? And then she says, I don't think so. And then she says, do you want me to describe it to you? And then it's just a montage of like pool parties, a Cadillac, Oh, there's some wine, okay, outside the hotel, we're dancing. Oh, look at my beautiful hair, champagne. Here's me and all my boss babes. This is a prime example of a lifestyle claim. And I wanna point out first and foremost that all of these clips, they seem to be from the same trip to Vegas. I could be absolutely wrong, but it does look like a highlight reel of like a whole bunch of clips from the Monate trip to Vegas that they did in April. And the reason that MLM Hunts post this kind of stuff is to create this facade of like this glamorous lifestyle that is to be desired. They want you to feel like you're missing out. They want you to ask questions. Oh, that looks so fun, where'd you go? They want you to inquire about this lifestyle that they're promoting so that they can then turn around and say, oh, it's all thanks to my MLM. Now, 
We know this. Monate Vegas trips are not free. Your flight is paid for, your hotel is paid for, and if you hit a certain rank and if you have a certain sales volume within a certain amount of time, you may or may not get $300 for food. And knowing that through that lens, I watched her reel again and I'm like, okay, all these nice dinners out, this champagne, this beach club that you're going to, none of that is covered. Like you did not get money for that unless she got the $300 food allowance, I don't know. Now I know I'm making a lot of assumptions right now, but the point I'm trying to make is that it's not all that it's cracked up to be. Things are not always as they seem. The objective of this reel is to show you how amazing Monate is and how they send you on these incredible, free, all-inclusive trips to Vegas. And it's obviously not 100% truthful, right? They pay for some things, but not for others. Most of what we saw in that reel was most likely not paid for. Now, I really went down a little rabbit hole, so I hope you're here for it because the upcoming Monate Vegas trip in 2022, it's scheduled for April 11th through the 14th, and they'll be staying at the MGM Grand. And just out of pure curiosity, I wanted to know, like, what is the value of this trip, right? What is Monate paying for? They're paying for flights and hotel. Okay, so how much does that really cost? I looked it up and for these dates at this hotel next year, the cost for the rooms is between 70 and $80 a night, which is actually insanely cheap. I literally stayed in a Motel 6 in Pascagoula, Mississippi for more money than that. That is so, so cheap. And for airfare, Monate's policies specify that you must take the cheapest flight available. It also says that this will most likely include layovers and that you must book your flights through Monate's like concierge service. You cannot book the flights on your own. So Monate has complete control over what airline you take, where it stops, and how much money is spent for that flight. My closest airport is the Orlando airport, so I just Googled Orlando to Las Vegas and I filtered by cheapest flights. This means we're flying things like Sun Country, Frontier, Spirit, cheap, 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 cheap flights. And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? There really isn't, but I'm just trying to prove a point that Monate is really trying to do this for as little money as possible. So for the purposes of this example, let's just pretend that I'm qualified to go on Monate's Vegas trip next year. I'm gonna be staying at the MGM Grand. Let's say it's $77 a night. Okay, that seemed to be the most popular. Let's say we're flying on Sun Country Airlines for these dates. The total cost that Monate is paying for me to go on that trip is $588. What MLM Huns don't seem to understand is that people who work the dreaded nine to five corporate jobs, they make more than $588 in just one week. And these poor girls are busting their butts for five months trying to like hit ranks and meet sales volume quotas and recruit people and it's like chaos. They're doing all of that simply so that they can boast and brag and post about how they went on this misleading quote unquote free trip to Vegas. It is very, very, very sad. You do not need to join a pyramid scheme to go to Vegas. It sounds like a very luxurious trip at surface level, right? we're going to Vegas, we're staying at the MGM Grand. But when you truly get into the finer details, this is an extremely affordable trip for most people that work a typical nine to five, 40 hour a week job. You do not need to join Monate. You do not need to shill shampoo. You do not need to recruit your friends and family to go to Vegas for four days. It is very achievable, very attainable, very reasonable. Heck, when we were in college, AJ went with his friends for spring break at Vegas, five days in Vegas, and he was working a serving job in college. This is not something special, but I would argue that it's a worthy investment for Monate, right, to spend $588 for a person to go to Vegas to post about it, to promote it, and use it as a recruitment tactic because ultimately Monate benefits from that, right? The way I see it, these trips are not your company's way of showing that they love you and they care about you. No, it's an investment, it's a business decision, and it's disguised as this like super luxurious trip that don't forget, they are calling it taxable income so you also get to pay taxes on this free trip. <laughs> honestly, pure insanity. All right, you guys, that is all I have for you for this video. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for sticking around. Please make sure to subscribe and like this video. It really supports my channel and I can continue putting out videos like this every single week. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I will see you in my next one real soon.